Hey, what's up, guys? I'm going to do another video today. Um, first and foremost, uh, you know, I'm I'm going to be doing this kind of format for a little bit. It's the only time I really can see having time for doing videos. But of course, uh, before I get driving here, uh, wait for everything to kind of warm up. Uh, I want to say uh, rest in peace, of course, to Kira Toriyama. That was a he was a big part of my childhood, uh, as he was with a lot of people. You know, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, those were shows that I watched as a kid. I didn't necessarily read the mangas, uh, although I thought, I, I need to. I need to get a hold of them. But, you know, I watched I watched the animes and, uh, of course, all the spinoff movies like Tree of Might and uh, The Dead Zone and stuff like that. Uh, and, of course, the video games he worked on. Um, Chrono Trigger is one of my favorite games of all time, still to this day, even having played it when I was six years old. Uh, and, of course, Dragon Warrior slash Dragon Quest, you know, those games. Uh, he did artwork for that, too. So, a uh, little bit of a sad time in geekdom this week, I suppose. Um, some people are wondering why his death was only, <coughs> excuse me, reported a few days ago. It's because in Japan... They, they have a sign of respect to allow the family, the next of kin, to mourn the loss before they make the news public, to the general public. So that's kind of why like we got this news kind of late. He actually died on March, March 1st, I believe. Uh, it was the same thing that happened with Kentaro Miura, the guy who created Berserk. With that being said... Um... Another Q and A, um, because and this one is going to have a much longer subject. A couple of off off topic things. First, we're going to get into uh, you know my job a little bit. Somebody asked me uh, if I drive. I guess because they're interested in it. But keep in mind that each Coca Cola place is different depending on the region you're in. So like as far as pay goes, that's. I can't tell you anything. It's going to be different depending on your area. Uh, as for the kind of trucks you're going to drive, the kind of trucks I drive mostly are automatic freight liners with a 37-foot trailer or 35. could be 36. I can't remember the measurement on them. But uh, the other day I did drive a 10-speed freight liner with a 45-foot trailer. So, you know, okay. Basically, if you're going to be going into this with the CDL, get something with that does not give you an automatic restriction, okay? Because I'm telling you, in case your truck messes up and the only thing they have left is a, is a stick shift, you want to be able to get that thing off of the lot. So don't settle for an automatic restriction, please. I'm telling you, you get your money's worth out of having a stick shift. Plus, when they're not looking, you can, you can learn to float the gears anyway. <laughs> Uh, with that being said, the more broader subject that was asked of me, and this is going to be more, mostly a kind of Christian-themed video, um, because the question came up in a message in, I think it was Grognardia, which is a, which is a chat that is attached to the Dungeons and Dragons for Christians group, and, you know, they... They were talking about specifically the OSR, right? Uh, because somebody asked the question, if there was any Dungeons and Dragons related podcasts that were Christian themed, family friendly, you know, there, there's nothing to be worried about in terms of language, uh, sexually explicit content, that kind of thing. And, you know, obviously the answers were not extremely very good because one guy said, as far as the sexually explicit stuff goes, he goes, Typically, the OSR is going to be where you want to go. As for like language and stuff like that, or even a Christian worldview, it's going to be a little bit bare bones. And you know what? I have to agree with him. It's a little bit of a shame. Now, you have guys like Retro DM Ray and Adventures with Dice and, of course, the Dungeon Minister and people that associate with those guys that are Christians and they, they try to do like G or PG related stuff. You know, they're... You know, because we are talking about a game that could have, like, death in it, right? Like, you know, the concept of death and, like, some dark elements to it that you put in for your players, right? So, with that in mind, uh, they do try to keep it as family-friendly as possible, right? So, 
but they're only a handful within this broader thing, right? So what I've tried to do with my channel, and I've failed, <laughs> is uh, trying to keep my stuff rated G or PG. You know, occasionally the one, one or two rotten words will slip out of my mouth, especially on a stream, right? And then, of course, I had that one where I said the S word uh, a few times in it. So I've tried to uh, do my best to make my stuff a little bit more presentable, right? Um, but it is kind of a shame that, you know, as Christians, we don't really have that much representation within the hobby. Yes, we exist, and we acknowledge the fact that there are Christians that play within the OSR part of the hobby, in addition to the more modern part of the hobby. Yes, we, we see that. But the thing is, where companies like Wizards of the Coast and Paizo are very much philosophically opposed to Christian morality, you would think that in the OSR that you would find more um, acceptance, if not endorsement. And with some guys I will, that are non-Christians, non that is true. Uh, you will find that, but then you still have those guys that want to broadly generalize Christians as that group that try to take our game away from us when it's very funny to me how people like that will be anti-collectivist and then they will collectivize Christians into that broad category and basically say that all Christians are guilty of that when that's not true. And I don't know if you've really taken a look into the satanic panic, but people like Tipper Gore, uh, if you look at her theology, like not exactly what I would call Christian. In fact, like a lot of people say broadline evangelical, but even then, as a reformed a, a classically reformed Calvinistic Protestant, um, I would say even that's a stretch. Like we're talking about, like she had some very, I gate, I do gatekeep what is Christian, what is not, because you know the Bible gives pre precepts for what is and what is not a believer. And looking at the fruits of somebody like Tipper Gore, it, she's not a believer. Like doctrine is just a suggestion and not you know, so. I throw her opinion out the window. So not exactly what I would call a Christian action. Uh, even look at some of the churches that did follow through with uh, the burnings and the confiscation of books, right? Uh, I'm sorry, the rain is getting a little heavy. But even look at them, right? Who are they? Like, very fringe elements of hardcore fundamentalism, right? And those guys are very doctrinally... Um, what's the word I want to use here? Because I'm trying to be nice. Ignorant, I guess, would be the best word that I could think of to use being nice. Guys who couldn't care less about the doctrine of the Trinity, but they they very much care what you do in your free time, right? Like, that, here's something that I've come to realize, and I can say this as a man who was an atheist once upon a time and who converted to the Christian faith, is that if you listen to a preacher that has this huge hang up on what you're doing and it's one thing to to strive for holiness right it's one thing to say you need to discern the things within your life to see what is worth keeping what is not it's another when like you're basically going on something so innocuous as a game and saying that it is inherently evil right so and the reason that they do that is because there's a lack of holiness in their preaching there's a lack of holiness in their teaching there's a severe lack of doctrine in their teaching like these are the kind of guys that will go on and on and on and on and on and on and on about, let's say, uh, Pokemon and and heavy metal, and, and it's because they couldn't preach on on the incarnation of the sun and the importance that is and the reflection of it within uh, the reflection of it from the Old Testament with the Passover lamb. They, they couldn't preach a sermon on that because they they lack the the uh, doctrinal fortitude to do that because you know their churches are more about being a a a, a uh, club than they are about being a place of worship so anyways got a little bit off topic there the reason that I care about this so much is because I, I, I believe that as Christians we do have a particular worldview 
that can be valued by non-believers within certain circles. And, of course, gaming is very, you know, it, it's very rough with it. I mean, think about it, man. Like, over the past 10 years with the video games and the games that I've seen posted online and stuff like that, the playthroughs, like, I'm so sick and tired of the trope that, oh, the church is evil. They're the big, bad, evil guy. It appears in every stupid game. It's not... It, it's a it's it's bordering on being a trope to becoming a full blown cliche. That's just the way it is. It's like oh the church has to be the big bad evil guy. It's like okay when was the last time a local congregation ran your local government? I'll wait. Take your time. That I'm going to have to get the other out. By the way, another quick question that was asked about this kind of thing is, uh, in case you're new to my channel, I used to dip and chew. So I used to spit like a camel. That's why I, in some of my older videos, you hear me go into a pop can. All right. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, I, it's because like, I think, I mean, even consider Lord of the Rings, right? People are all about, oh, it's not supposed to be an analogy. But even Tolkien himself wrote that, even though it didn't start out as such, it did reflect a lot of his Roman Catholic beliefs. Uh, through, the, I mean, there's entire dissertations written about the relationship of Frodo, uh, Aragorn, and Gandalf. In relation to Christ, the Lord's prophet, uh, Christ the Lord's offices as prophet, prince, and priest, right? So, I mean, it, it can be done, and it can be done in gaming. And there are some guys who like to use Dungeons and Dragons and other to tabletop role-playing games as a medium to try to evangelize. Now, I, I, I believe that if you're going to do that, you need to make that clear first and foremost, okay? That it's going to be a Christian-themed game, okay? Because, again, I'm not a Session Zero guy, but I do believe you need to be up, up front and honest about what your game is going to be at, about what's going to feature. Uh, like what, what the feel of the game is. I believe you do need to advertise it. You don't need a session zero for that. Just simply talk to them like an adult, right? So, but there are people out there that are willing to use it as, as me. And, you know, because it might be the only game available in the area, people are more likely to take it. So, um, you can do that. I don't have a problem with that. So, again, make that clear and up front. But, you know, there are guys that like to use the game in that particular way. And some people don't even like to. It, some people, it's just more like putting on a family-friendly TV show for, for their kids, right? So, like, they want to run a family-friendly game for their kids. And they're, they're looking online for all these resources, and they're finding very little. Uh, they're finding very little resources. And I, for one, happen to believe that, they're, that the market is... The market is there for Christian-themed games, right? Um, or settings, or whatever you want to do, really. So, I don't know, man. It, it, it's just kind of one of those things that is frustrating uh, to start watching somebody's playthrough, and then, of course, the the player character is going to F-bomb like crazy. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's believable in this medieval setting. Let's have somebody talk like... Uh, like like a like a stinking valley girl uh, from 1980s who who couldn't keep her mouth clean if you gave her a bar of soap that 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 that's a cool idea that's never been done before and I, I don't and because I'm of the personal opinion that if every word that pops out of your mouth is an f word that you're you're flat out stupid and I don't I don't care if that offends you or not. It's because you don't know how to talk like an adult. So, that's just why I am. I have let stuff like that slip, but oh, I've got...
Sorry about that. There was no actual line at the bank. <laughs> it was actually really good. But it's kind of rainy out, so most people are probably going to wait till about lunchtime or something. <clears throat> but, anyways, uh, to get back to the language thing, like, yeah, like, I, like somebody, and don't get me wrong, I, I worked with, uh, I worked in a factory for years, okay? I've been called the, some of the most heinous or horrendous things you can call a person, right? And I've also, I'm not, I've also gave, gave it back, right? <clears throat> you know, but, you know, if you go work in that kind of setting, People ain't dropping F-bombs every second, except for the stupid ones, okay? So, it's, it's just kind of my thing. Like, it, It's like when I roll my eyes because somebody posts that meme about how, oh, people who cuss are the most honest and the most smartest people. It's like, really? Because from personal experience, it's been the total opposite with me. Every person I know that has failed high school and couldn't make it and is working at McDonald's cusses like a sailor. <laughs> It, it's like the it's like the dumbest like oh what's your source for this particular fact that you are trying to push on me it doesn't exist but anyway yeah like I would love for I would love for like even if it, it doesn't necessarily have to be explicitly Christian but just family friendly like there should be more family friendly content out there and the, I mean there is but there's not that much and. I'm, I'm specifically targeting the OSR because, you know, I'm part of that particular nation hobby. And, you know, it is kind of a little bit frustrating whenever you try to, uh, whenever you're trying to find a good channel or a good show to watch. And it's just nothing but like F bombs and F this, F that, this, that, and everything else, you know, it's kind of gets dumb. Like, you're not, there's a, there's a reason they call it polite company, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, if you're, if you're cussing like a sailor with literally every breath you have, it's like, you're not worth watching. That's like, that's going to be your shtick, that's going to be your gimmick, and that's all there, it's a one-trick pony. You know, it's kind of like when a cartoon cusses like crazy. Like, you remember when, you remember when cartoons didn't really cuss, and then like, you had, you had shows like The Simpsons Come On. And it was like, oh, this is new, and this is fresh, because they're talking like adults. But then, like, it went the extreme in that direction, in that, oh, they didn't stop cussing. So, it was just kind of idiotic. Well, I'm going to have to wait a while on this particular place to open. I'm a little bit early, about, about five, ten minutes. So, I'll just pull around and park, and I can finish my video. But, yeah, it's like... I don't know. I kind of went off on a tangent a little bit, especially about the language, but you know, I feel like it does have a point to what I'm talking about, right? It's like... Why don't we just have some, some good old-fashioned entertainment for once? You know? People are starved for that. Because there's a neat, there there's a market for it. There's a niche that needs to be filled for it, right? Okay. Pretty sure I'm behind the line. Yes, I am. Good deal. Which this place is not particularly hard to back up into. Anyway, it's just that sometimes the curb can throw you off. So anyway. I guess I'm like more critical about the OSR part of the hobby because of the fact that, you know, we, I mean, we pride ourselves on like being like in, in terms of like gatekeeping, only like gatekeeping at the table, right? Like if, if you have newcomers, like, you know, because it's just like I have a coworker and we were driving the other day, uh, to Tompkinsville, you know, which is about close to a two hour drive in addition to the fact that you go from Eastern time to central time. Right. And you know, he, he's kind of a younger fella, younger me, you know, he's like 29. So he, uh, he's like interested in D and D and stuff like that. And he's just like, but the one thing I can't stand is the fact that like you have, 
people that talk like idiots and like they make it very cringy and you know they they cuss in every sentence they say i was like well that's just one part of, of the hobby that's just one particular group um and you could per- of course put it up to personal taste as much as you want that's fine yeah but our personal taste is we want something that doesn't do that so why don't people do that why don't people provide that I don't know, man. Maybe I just need to start putting out... Maybe I need to do some games with my kids. And... No, I'm not a big fan of recording my kids and putting them on the internet. That's stupid. But you get what I'm trying to say, right? Like... I don't know. I've kind of gone a little bit too off topic. Kind of went off the rails a little bit, so... I'm waiting a little bit longer for this place to open, so... Anyways, I'm going to cut it short. I've been rambling for like 20 minutes now. As always, guys, take care. God bless. I'll see you on the other side. I'll try to put out another video next week, too. Peace.